How are you doing? All good? So let's talk about patterns, component patterns in React with TypeScript in particular. So hey everyone, my name is Martin Hochel. I work as a tech lead for UI at fintech company called Twisto in Prague, Czech Republic. I'm also Google developer expert for web technologies. You can follow me on Twitter. I publish technical articles at medium.com and I'm doing open source at GitHub. Besides that, I'm running the biggest JavaScript meetup in Prague. It's called NG Party. By the way, that NG stands for Next Generation. You see what I did there? <coughs> it's not Angular. Uh, beside that, when I'm not doing programming or community stuff, I'm enjoying my time on one of the boards. I do skateboarding, snowboarding, surfing, etc. So, let's make things straight. What are we going to not cover? in this talk. I'm not going to do any deep dive into React or TypeScript. So for newbies uh, of TypeScript in the room, uh, that might be a little issue, but uh, you will get it, no worries. Instead, what are we going to do talk about is patterns, right? And in the React world, what kind of patterns do we have? We have component patterns. Because the whole applications built within React are just trees of components. So a component is the single entity, which is the most important in React. And question is, how am I going to showcase these patterns to you, right? By some slides or something? Well, of course not. I'm going to do live coding, because it's fun. It makes sense, right? Especially in front of the huge audience. Nothing can go wrong. So with that said, are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. Perfect. I'm not. Let's do it. <laughs> so, I'm going to switch on my guitar chair. So, uh, on the left side, I have running server. On the right side is my editor with code. And uh, let's hop back to the slides. So, initially, what is a component in React? It's just a function, right? It's a pure function that accepts some arguments called props and returns some view. And in terms of patterns, we have two initial patterns. We have stateless and stateful components. So what is a stateless component? Well, it's just that function that I described. So let's hop back to the editor and implement some stateless component. We will do some button, because buttons are nice. So this is just like normal JavaScript. I'm creating some component called button, right? And I'm uh, using some props. And because I'm in TypeScript world, I need to annotate stuff. So I already prepared a type annotation called button props right there. And we need to define some props for our button. So every button needs to have some children. I want some children, mama. And children is going to be type of React child, just like that. And then we're going to need some uh, click handler, because we want to click on the buttons. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense, right? And this is going to return anything, and it's going to accept some arguments of uh, type React mouse event. And last but not least, we're going to have some color, which is going to be optional. And it's going to be of type color variance. I already pre-prepared this color variance type. It's just a union of various types literals. So no rocket science over there. Also, I'm going to mark on click to be optional. Now, before going into any details of the implementation, it's good practice to use the structuring within your arguments. So I'm going to destructure these props, and I'm going to return some JSX. But before, I want to create some class name, which is going to depend on if I'm propagating or using the color prop, right? So if color is going to be defined, I'm going to use some button and color. Color, right. And let's return our button. So is our button. We have some children. We need to define our own click. As you can see, this all IntelliSense that's thanks to the TypeScript. Like it's top-notch developer experience. So uh, you don't, you cannot do any typos because otherwise the compile will not compile. The program will not, not compile. Sorry. And I will just pass here the on click. And also, I'm gonna use my class name. Uh, on the button component. So that's defined. I need to export it as well because I'm going to use it in uh, various other examples. And let's re-render this button. So I have a button. Click me. 
I'm gonna save. It's right here, but it's doing anything because I haven't registered my on click, right? So let's do that. And it's gonna be just a function that's gonna console log. Hello. And if I click, I'm outputting hello in the console. Probably it's too small for you, but uh, it's there, trust me. And also I defined the color variance, right? So thanks to the TypeScript, I have all these APIs right there. I don't have to go into documentations. I immediately get the benefits of a statically typing system within a JavaScript. So let's say I'm gonna use secondary and the color changed. If I, if I will do some typo, again, I have compile error immediately, right? So I don't even have to showcase this browser server like live because I know that this is not valid program. So one of the benefits of using TypeScript. Cool, so that's a stateless component. The second pattern is stateful component. So what is a stateful component? Again, it's just a function which manages some internal state. And we are uh, handling internal state in a React via hooks. It used to be classes, but now we are hooks. So classes are kind of, let's say, dead in React. I don't know, maybe. So let's implement some stateless component. Uh, we're going to do counter, because everyone loves counters, right? Money. Anyways. Um, we need to define or state. So I'm going to use use state hook, which is going to accept some count. And it's also a good practice to extract this to some constants outside the function. So let's call it initial state. It's going to be count. And I'm going to pass it right here. So I have initial state. And now I'm going to destructure return of this function. And it's going to be state and set state. And this is like traditional JavaScript, right? But because TypeScript has very strong inference, it knows that state is type of count of type of number, and set state is some callback, right? So it just works, and it's awesome. So now I'm going to return some markup uh, with some class name. I already pre-prepared some classes. Again, I got IntelliSense. Thank you, TypeScript. And I'm going to use my predefined button. And this is going to be like thumbs up and thumbs down. And we're going to render some counter output, right, from the state. So let's do that. State count. And this button needs to uh, get some on click handlers. So this is going to be like handle increment. And from the thumbs down, we need to implement handle decrement. So let's implement those. So handle increment is going to be function that uh, will do what? That's going to update our state. So we're going to have some previous state, and we need to return a new state. Again, I got all the IntelliSense, what props are necessary, thanks to the TypeScript. And I'm going to just go and call set. Sorry, I'm going to do previous state, count plus one, because it's increment. And I go, I'm going to do a similar thing for decrement. And I need to decrement just like that. All right. So let's render our counter. So counter is here, and it counts. Yay, nay. Awesome. So that's stateless component. Another type of patterns in React, we have uncontrolled and controlled components. So what is an uncontrolled component? That's exactly what we did, right? So again, it's just a function that manages internal state and it lives in its own life. So I'm going to copy all this code. And I'm going to put it here to another kind of examples. And I need to import button again. And I'm using counter. And I need to switch to that demo. Perfect. Let's check if it works. Right. So this is uncontrolled component. What's the another pattern, this controlled component? Well, that means that my component is controlled by the parent or the parent component. That means that the parent component is a single source of truth. So it defines the state and the change handlers. So my internal component just propagates the new state upwards. It doesn't mutate or use internal state. So with that said, let's implement or change or, com or counter component to implement this controlled behavior. 
So how is it going to look like? So in the implementation, if I'm going to use counter, I want to have some uh, counter, which is going to be the value from my parent, because this is like parent component. It handles, it defines its own, own state and has some handle handlers for change, changing the state. And the second property is going to be need some uh, on, on change handler, right? So handle change. But now we got some uh, TypeScript errors. Property counter doesn't exist. Yep, because we haven't defined it. So let's go and define it. So I'm going to create some props. And it's going to be defined right here. Do, 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 do. So we defined counter, right? Uh, let's say it's going to be count. That's that's better name. I'm going to need to refactor it here. So count is going to be type of number. And we also need to define some on change handler, which is going to just propagate up some new value, and it's going to return anything. So void. Perfect. And both of these need to be optional. So I can use tab script map types, and this will convert these required properties to be optional, as you can see on the inferred definition, those question marks that makes them optional. So with that said, I cannot render my internal state anymore, because this component can work in both ways. So what we need to do, I need to create some getter for a, for a count. So let's implement that. So get state. This is going to be just a function that returns a new state, in our case, count. And we need to check if props that count is present. If it is, we're going to use that. Otherwise, we're going to use our state count, right? And I get some errors right there. Third questions. Thank you very much. You are the winner of the special prize, which is unknown. <laughs> All right. So let's use our get state. Count. Cool. So nothing changed. This stopped work. Oh no. Panic. Why is that? Well, because we are not handling it inside or increment and decrement handlers. So let's do that. So again, I need to check if props count is defined. And if it is, I just need to call on change, which was passed from the parent component. And within this change, I need to pass props count with modified behavior, in this case, plus one. And again, I have some compilation errors because on change is optional, so it can be undefined. So again, I need to double check to make the compiler happy, like I can be 100% sure that in this branch it's present, right? So otherwise, I'm just going to call set state. And to be consistent, let's use or getter for both states. So count right there, right there. And I'm just going to copy paste this to the decrement. And I'm going to minus 1, minus 1. All right. And it should work. So the first one is uncontrolled component. So it maintains internal state. And the second one is controlled, which means the state is propagated from the parent to the child. Right. So we get the same numbers, but internally, our controlled component, component leverages those APIs from the parent, not the internal ones. So that's controlled and controlled component. So what other APIs do we have? Let's say tomorrow you'll go to the office and boss will come to you like, hey, man, you know what? And you say, what, boss? We need a new counter, man. The, the buttons need to be colorful, right? red and green, you know, and the count needs to be under, under those buttons. And you say, no worries, boss. I can handle that. So how are you going to do that? Well, that's easy. I'm just going to copy the counter and change the colors, right? Nope. That's not dry. That's repetition of code. That's, that's bad. We have better patterns. In React, we have a pattern which is called a render prop, or children as a function. What do I mean by that? Our counter will just implement the API, and it will propagate that API via children, which can be function, because everything in React is a function, right? So it can be a function, and we will just propagate that internal API via the function to a consumer. So some other developer that needs to consume our APIs, and it will just render 
what he wants. So he's going to be in charge of, of how the template is going to look like. So with that said, let's implement render as a prop. And I'm going to copy all this counter. OK. Let's copy it right there. And I need to, again, import my lovely button. And I'm going to switch to the render props example. But this time, I'm just going to comment this out, because counter is not going to render anything, basically. Instead, I need to define these children. So I'm going to use intersection in the TypeScript, and I'm going to define children, which is going to be required. And it's going to be a function that will return some markup, so JSX element. And it's going to define props. And this props needs to have count of type of number, right? Then we're going to have some increment, which is going to be just a function which returns anything, and decrement. Just like that. And now let's return props and our children. And again, I'm in TypeScript, so I get the IntelliSense what needs to be defined. So I have counter. And I can use this by our, my get state getter, like count. Next one is increment. I'm just going to alias my internal handle inc. And decrement is the last one, handle decrement. Perfect. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to use it right here. So here is our counter. And now it implements children as a function. So. I'm using the children as a function right here. And I'm going to render what I rendered before. Let me just format this a little bit, like that. And again, I'm in TypeScript, and TypeScript knows what the type of children is within the markup. So I get this beautiful IntelliSense for free. right? I know that counter propagates some count, some increment, and some decrement. And now I can get rid of this logic, like what kind of state needs to be rendered in the template. I'm just using count. And I'm just using increment and decrement. OK, that works. And what the boss says, he said, like, button needs to be colorful. So I can uh, use my colors for increment is going to be success. And for decrement, it's going to be. Danger, danger, danger. Bzzm. And it's there. It works, right? We got, we got colorful buttons with modified template, but the logic remains the same. And we can basically use any template that we want. So this is very flexible and uh, composable API of a React called render props or children as a function. Next pattern, high order component. What is high order component? Well, it's just a higher order function. It's a function that accepts a function and returns something new. It's a functional approach or functional, functional pattern. In a React use case, we have just function that takes some uh, component and it returns a new component with enhanced behavior. Or rather say, we need to pass through uh, the original props. And also, we can inject some new behavior, like some kind of dependency injection, if you, if you, if you want. So let's implement this pattern. This is like one of the com most complicated patterns in terms of TypeScript and React. But uh, we can handle that. No worries. So let's switch to have the component example. And here is some uh, stateless component, like counter wanna be, because he wants to be like a counter. Doo -doo. Uh, anyways, so here we have some props, like count, increment, decrement. So those props are very familiar, right? Because we already defined them for a previous counter. So let's be more dry. And instead, we can use some injected props. And this is like meta programming in TypeScript. I'm not going to cover that. But basically, we can extract any type of, informa of type information from existing like runtime environment. In our case, it's a counter function. So this injected props is the implementation that we need. So instead of repet uh, doing repetition and defining those props again, we just use intersection with injected props. And I forgot to export my counter from previous example. 
Perfect. No compile errors. Good. So how to implement this behavior for this counter wannabe? Again, we want we could like again redefine the state and the handlers, but that's not what we want. What we need to do or what we want to do is introduce higher the component. So we need to create this with counter function, which will accept our counter wannabe component. So let's do that right now. So here is our with counter function. All right. It accepts or some compo component and it's gonna internally define the new component with counter. And we need to return that counter. Do, 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 do. Just like that. And we have some compiler errors. Now comes the hard part. We need to introduce generics. Right? So we need to have some generic argument of type p, which is going to be some props, and we want to constrain that generic to implement some kind of interface. So in our case, it needs to extend or inject the props, right? With that, we're making that type flow constraint that we cannot wrap any component, but that the wrap component needs to have this injected props API defined. With that, we need to, again, annotate our component, and that's uh, component type. That's a type from, Re from React, and it's going to be type of P. So far, so good. What's next? We need to define internal props of our with counter component. So let's say we might think, well, we can just define the P, and that's, that's it. But not really. What we need to do, we need to subtract those original props from the injected props. So how can we do that? Again, it's just kind of metaprogramming in TypeScript, which I'm not going to cover. And let's say we have some subtract mapped type, and we're going to subtract from P all the inj injected props. So with that, we need to be good component citizens, and we want to remain uh, those pass-through props from the original API. So I'm just going to do that right now, so pass-through. And I'm going to return my component. I'm going to spread these original props there. I'm just going to reformat it, just like that. And I have some compiler errors here. Hmm. Type pick, blah, blah, blah. Well, too long didn't read. It, say, it says that I'm not implementing the interface that I described by the injected props. Well. That makes sense, right? I need to define this decrement, increment, and so on and so forth. So how should we approach this? Again, I could re-implement that logic within this component, but because I already created a counter as a render prop or as a children as a function app, uh, sorry, API, I can use it right here to leverage existing behavior. So let's use our counter. And this counter as this API, children as a function. And we're going to return our component. And we are getting injected props. And these injected props are the type that we are after, right? And I'm going to just spread these injected props at our orgi original wrapped component. And because there is a TypeScript constraint, a compiler of spreading generics, I need to make sure and cast it like, hey, I know what I'm doing. This injected props is tr really uh, getting a uh, be of type of P. So let me reformat this. And that should do the trick. Let's use it. So extended component. I'm going to use it right here. So extended component, it just implements increments. So that works. I'm incrementing the values. Also. I have some additional API defined here, which was this color type. Let's see if that works. It's there, perfect. So I'm passing through my original API. And this could be, let's say, secondary color changed. Great. So that's passing through original props and injecting some new behavior. And the last thing that we can do, we can extend this behavior of the component within the higher order component. So let's say, we will define some extended props. We want to add some behavior, like, like uh, if the internal counter will be bigger than some value, we want to output some value like you shall not pass instead of uh, keeping with incrementation of the value. 
So let's do that. Again, I need to add that extended props to my internal definition of the component. So let's pass it right there. So extended props. And now I can destructure the max count is right there. And I'm going to modify what we're going to render. So if max count is present and injected props count is going to be bigger than max count, I want to return You shall not pass. Right? It's going to be alert, alert, danger. <laughs> okay. So let's write it out. I have a new API, max count, right there. Let's say it to three. One, two, three. <laughs> right? It works. Extended behavior. That's like a very flexible pattern with this header component, although it's very complicated, but uh, it's doable. So that was header component. Whew. Last thing, hooks. Who is using hooks? 30% of audience. You will get it, no worries. Uh, so React introduced new API how we can define let's say, reusable controllers within our components via hooks. So it's kind of funny because this API basically replaces what I showcase, the render props and hire the component. So I'm going to show you how to just take the logic from the render prop counter and create some custom use counter hook. So let's do that. I'm going to go here and I'm just copying the body of my counter, counter component. So let's create use counter hook, right? And it's going to accept some props of type props. I'm just copying the behavior. Nothing changed. There is a small change. There is no children. It's just basic function that returns some object with some API. So very simple, like uh, even an infant can understand this, right? Because it's just a function, no React-specific things, except the use state hook. <laughs> Anyways, so that's the definition of the use counter. And let's define our counter again. So const counter component. It's going to have types of props. Props. And I'm uh, going to go back to the render prop API. And I'm just going to copy this. And I'm just going to use it here. Again, button is yelling at me. That's fine. But now I'm missing increment, decrement, and count. Yep. But now we have our counter hook, which gives us count, decrement, increment. So that's all what we need. And let's check it out if it's going to work. So there is a hooks. And let's try, oh, sorry. Let's try the behavior, like on control behavior. So let's use our counter again. It's there. It works. And also, let's check if our control API works as well. So count, we're going to use state count from the parent and on change handler again from the parent. So this is like handle change. Boom. Increment works. The state was updated in the parent, also in the child, and decrement works as well, right? So with hooks, it's easy. It's even much better for a type safe perspective because the good inference uh, of the compiler. So in the end, your code looks basically very similar to vanilla JavaScript with other type safety, of course. Whew. So we are at the end. Let's recap what we learned today. We covered five patterns of React components and TypeScript, how, they, how, can they, how can they benefit from each other, and how to basically write resilient components with flexible APIs for your consumers. So if you take a look at some kind of uh, 
like graph, all these various patterns are composable, right? So you start with controlled, uncontrolled component, then you leverage that behavior to implement render prop, and then by leveraging render prop and controlled and uncontrolled behavior, you can implement hardware component, right? So you can expose all these three types of APIs to a consumer. But of course, there is the Pac-Man called Hooks, which basically eats the render props and hire the components, so you can switch those patterns with the hooks, or you can define all of these patterns and really make uh, your consumers of the components comfortable that what kind of patterns do want they use, because all of these patterns come with some trade-offs in terms of testability, composability, functional approach, etc., etc. So if you want to learn more, uh, I've written recently this article with that head. You, you remember that from the beginning of this talk? So definitely check it out if you want to learn more about TypeScript Pro Tips with or without React. Actually, there are 20 type, uh, th 20 Pro Tips. So that's why the plus plus. Uh, also, you can check out my other articles. I've uh, written various uh, articles about Redux. Все так же, как обычно, вы можете задавать вопросы по-русски, и мы их переведем, поэтому не стесняйтесь, поднимайте руки. Thank you for nice speech. Uh, can you explain uh, why do you use uh, types instead of interfaces? Oh, right. I've, I've written an article about that, <laughs> so you can check it out. Uh, it's basically up to you what you want to use, but th there is a one constraint with interface. If you want to use type unions or type intersections, that cannot be done with interface. So that's why I'm using type for all the things. Great question. But if you want to like uh, write third-party definitions, always use interfaces, because interfaces can be extendable by some third party. Thanks. Good question. Uh, thank you. Uh, what about uh, React context? Uh, some advanced p uh, patterns like uh, compound components? Uh. Yeah, uh, <coughs> good question. So compound components are problematic in TypeScript. Uh, let's say if you want to use like children clone, that's not very good for type safety. But if you are using context, that can be done as well. So basically, you're just implementing some uh, context and you use, use context hook. Or if you want to use the classes API, you can do that as well. So it works very well in terms of type safety and, uh, and React. So I didn't cover that because you can implement or leverage context in any of these types, in render props, in hardware components, or in hooks. So I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> Thanks. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your speech. Thanks. I'm sorry for my English. Um, we have uh, component defined as a function, and how we can deal with state variable that don't influence on render? That don't... Uh, influence on render. That don't infers? Influence. Не влияет на render. Maybe don't affect to... No. Don't affect to render state variables that don't affect to render in in function component. I'm not sure I understand the question. Давай попробуем по русски. Так, ладно. Uh, как uh, быть с переменными стейта в функциональных компонентах, которые не влияют на рендер? С переменными стейта. Не, не, я сейчас пытаюсь просто понять с переменными стейта. У нас есть стейт, который меняется где-то, допустим, по таймеру или что-то такое, но, но нам не нужно, чтобы он рендерился. То есть у нас был шут компонент рендер в компонентах, да, в классовых компонентах. Okay. Как, как быть с функциями? Окей, okay. you have a state, and for some reason uh, it changes, like uh, in every second. Uh -huh. And you don't want the component to re-render every time. So how to prevent this re-render? Правильно? Yeah, so if you're using props uh, before you had this, that uh, pure component or should component update, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that, but that. now you can use like use memo or memo hire the component which is baked in React. So mm -hmm. that will do the same functionality with function. Plus minus понял.
Hey Martin. Hey. My name is Michael. Thank you for your speech. Thanks. Br brilliant presentation. Uh, I have a question for you about uh, folder structure. Mm -hmm. uh, in our bo boilerplate, we have uh, all components uh, stored in one folder without uh, um, without pages uh, or other things. Yeah. Only as pure components in one single folder. Is mm -hmm. it right? It depends. <laughs> uh, if it's a, if it's a to-do app, it's okay. Uh, if it's a huge scalable enterprise application, this I'd is very scalable enterprise application. Cool, cool. So uh, I would I would recommend to switch to mono repos in in the first place, and then uh, to structure the components in some kind of atoms and molecules, right? So these components are not dependable. Like they live on their own, they have have some uh, public defined APIs, and uh, they are just basically reusable with any type of application. And then you can encapsulate those components in some more specific components, which needs to work for your speci special use cases, like fetching APIs, rendering something based on some fetches. And I will structure those components into like feature folders, right? Like say you have users. You have, I don't know, uh, invoices and stuff. And there needs to be separate folders with separate structure for those components. Uh, for now, we have a structure with uh, separate UI kit uh, and uh, gr grid elements. Mm -hmm. what, um, so yeah. yeah, yeah, that works. Ah, OK, thank you. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hi. Th thanks for your talk. In controlled counter, you check if uh, props count if it's not now. Yeah. Is it necessary? Is it good practice? Uh, could you well, talk something about yeah. that? Yeah. Well, I know that uh, it looks like anti pattern, even like uh, comparing not with the triple equals, but uh, with the double equals, I'm just checking if it's undefined or now. So that's that's good pattern. Also, like if I would implement this for a production release, I would create some uh, type guards, let's say, right? But uh, I didn't want to to cover this in this talk. Basically, type guard is just a function that uh, implements TypeScript type guard behavior, so it will cast or narrow the type if it's present to match that exact type. So don't do this. Don't do this at home. But encapsulate the type guard functions. C good question. Thanks. Well. Well. <laughs> Thanks for your talk. Uh, Thanks. question is quite simple. Uh, isn't it a bad practice to combine uncontrolled and controlled behavior in the same component? Because uh, in the one example, you did it. Mm -hmm. So from outside of the component, you don't even know. Is it OK, let's say I'm not sure that it will be uncontrolled. Hmm. Again, that depends. Uh, of course, if you just want to go strictly one, data, one, one way data flow with controlled components, you don't have to implement that behavior, right? No state. Yeah, but for some cases, uh, for example, I want this counter to be controlled, mm -hmm. but in, on another page or somewhere else, I want it to be uncontrolled. Yeah. So how to mix this and uh, avoid uh, the actual mixing mix in the component itself? So is it a bad practice or is it normal? It's a, it's a usually good practice. That's what I'm using. I mean, in our teams, because you make this component flexible. And I don't know if you noticed, but I didn't do any state copying. So that's bad practice, definitely. So don't do that. Rather, if it's controlled, just keep the state and handle it via this on-change handler. Call okay. Back. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs>